All right, first and foremost, I want to give all glory, honor, and praise unto my power, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, Shalom to the elders of GMS. Today's lesson is titled, The Lord's Servant Shall Eat. And speaking of those, you know, who are serving Yahweh by Yahweh Shai, in all truth and sincerity, you know, because we understand through reading the scriptures that there's going to be a time of great famine. Now, the scriptures also talk about the famine of the word, but then there's also going to be a famine uh, of bread as well. You know, and we see that, you know, uh, taking place and manifesting in the earth with all these different food shortages, which is only going to get worse and worse as this economy continues to collapse. Uh, you, you see how there's been nothing but uh, supply shortages going on. And this is only going to continue to worsen until what? Ultimately, until there's a famine. Right. Because we read this in second, it was the 16th chapter and the 22nd verse. It says for many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine. And this is speaking of the end times. Right. So it says for many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy, which, you know, I don't want to rock the eye. You know, I'm of the elect as well as you sincere hearted brothers and a few sisters, you know, of the remnant, the one third. Right. We don't have to fear the sword or uh, 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 the famine. You understand why? Because. We're serving our power and all truth and the sincerity, and he's going to reward us uh, accordingly for it. Like it says in Isaiah, the third chapter, right? Because um, basically you get what you put in. All right. So Isaiah chapter three and verse 10, it says, say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. All right. So it's based on what you do. Woe unto the wicked. It shall be ill with him for the reward of his hand shall be given him. The reason why the wicked are going to get judged, the way they're going to get judged is because of what they've been doing with their hand. What does that mean? Their actions, right? So the heavenly father, he basically just going to give you a reward for whatever it is that you do. So we can take solace in the fact that since we've been sowing righteousness, that ultimately what we're going to be fed during this time of famine, which, you know, um, is the title of the lesson right here, pursuing Isaiah the 65th chapter, All right, It says, um, Man, I'm going to get verse 12. I like that. Isaiah 65 and verse 12, it says, Therefore will I number you to the sword, and, 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 and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter, because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear. And how, how does the Heavenly Father, you know, uh, uh, speak in, in the earth? Through his men, right? Through his prophets. It says, When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before my eyes, and did and did choose that wherein I delighted not. So you choosing to, del uh, to, to actually do what the Heavenly Father delights not in, it's going to result in you what? Being numbered to the sword, right? So verse 13, it says, Therefore, thus saith Adawan Yahweh, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. So that's what these people have to look forward to, right? And we should take a good heart. And knowing that these are the things that we have to look forward to, right? Rejoicing, not being ashamed, right? Not being thirsty, not being hungry. Why? Because the Heavenly Father is going to supply for us, just as he did with our ancient forefathers before, which I'm going to, I'm going to pull up an account of uh, how the Heavenly Father delivered one of our ancient uh, and righteous forefathers from a, a very dangerous situation and actually had him had a last laugh over his enemies. Right? What was that? Belted Dragon right here. So this, this is an apocrypha bell and a dragon. This is the account with Daniel when he was cast into the lion's den. When the other men, you know, tried to uh, conspire against him to actually, you know, take Daniel's seat. Right. So I bell and a dragon. Uh, verse 32, it says, uh, and, and, then, and in the den, there were seven lions and they had given them every day two carcasses and two sheep, which then were not given to them to the intent that they might devour Daniel. So it was seven lions in the lion's den. They purposely fed these lions two carcasses every day so that way they, they would get used to eating that amount of food. And then purposely before they put Daniel in, into that lion's den, they starved those lions so that way they, they would be extra hungry. And ultimately, uh, uh, to the intent that they would devour Daniel. Right. But the Heavenly Father didn't have it. So verse 33 says now there was in Jewry. Right. Meaning back in the land in Jerusalem. Right. Now there were in Jewry a prophet called Hab Hab Habakkuk who made pottage and broken bread in a bowl. And was going into the field for to bring it to the reapers, right? So people that, you know, basically was farming and whatnot. He was about to feed those guys, the, uh, the prophet Habakkuk, right? He was back in the land, uh, back in the land of uh, Jerusalem at that particular time. It says, verse 34, but the angel of Haadwan said unto Habakkuk, go, carry the dinner that thou hast uh, into Babylon unto Daniel, who was in the lion's den. And Habakkuk said, Adawan, I never saw Babylon, neither do I know where the den is. 
All right, verse 36. Then the angel of Ha'adawan took him by the crown, meaning his hair, right? And bear him by the hair of his head. And, and, and through the vehemency, right? That power, right? That vehemency, that's, that's what that means. Like that power, that force, right? Of his spirit set him in Babylon over the den. He might have flown over there, might have teleported. I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it was definitely, you know, he took him, he took him by the crown of his head, his hairs of the head, and brought him all the way to Babylon from, from Jerusalem to, to, to the intent what? To feed Daniel, man, right? Because Daniel was one of the heavenly father's servants. So did he not eat? Right? He did. So I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read this in uh, verse 37. It says, And Habakkuk cried, saying, Oh, Daniel, Daniel, take the dinner which the heavenly father have sent thee. And Daniel said, Thou hast remembered me, O Adawan, right? O Salaka, O Yahweh. Neither has thou forsaken them that seek thee and love thee, right? So that's the point. If you seek the heavenly father and you love him, and how do you show your love uh, to the heavenly father? You do what he say, right? That's even how it is, you know, just what, like your earthly father, right? Your earthly dad. You show him that you love him and you respect him by doing what he say. All right, dad, no, no problem, whatever you need, you know? It's the same thing, all right? So Daniel's saying, you know, thank you, Yahweh. Basically what? You remembered me in my time of trouble, just like you said you would, right? And, and, and he said, neither has thou forsaken them that seek thee and love thee, right? So if you really love the heavenly father and you seek, and you seek him, he got you, huh? Verse 39, so Daniel rose and did eat. And the angel of Hadawan said Habakkuk in his own place again immediately, right? So I don't know. They say immediately. It may, may have flown back there. may have teleported, you know? Who knows, right? But verse 40, it says, upon the seventh day, the king went down to, uh, the king went to be well Daniel, right? Because he probably thought Daniel was dead. And when he came to the den, he looked in and behold, Daniel was sitting. Then cried the king with a loud voice saying, great are, uh, um, great are Adawan, the power of Daniel. And there was none other beside him, man. So meaning when, when, when that heathen saw that, when the heathen king saw that, Daniel and the lions then still alive, he was like, oh man, surely that, surely your God is with you, right? Who wouldn't say that, <laughs> you know? Verse 41, it says, then cried the king with a loud voice saying, great are uh, the God of Daniel, and there is none beside thee. Verse 42, and he drew him out and cast those that were the cause of his destruction into the den, and they were devoured in a moment before his face. So basically, who had the last laugh? Daniel. Right. The same people that caused him to get put in the lion's den, then got put into the lion's den and devoured immediately. That's that showing that what it was the heavenly father that, said, uh, that actually sustained those uh, uh, those lions from not even touching a hair on Daniel's head. man. Right. So that's a beautiful thing. So we can read things like that and, and to see, OK, dang, heavenly father was there for Daniel like that. Say, you know, say, 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 say one of the brothers or the sisters in a, in a, in a very trivial situation like that, they could think back on a situation like this. And take uh, and, and take good heart on that, man, and believe and have faith that they're going to, you know, be provided for and protected the same way. Right. Yeah. You, and, and Daniel was a man. You you telling me Daniel wasn't scared? Shit. You talking about seven big ass, seven big lions. Right. But but ultimately what? You know, because he, he's still a man, but he had faith, though. And that's the point. Having faith is 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 essential, because like it says in Hebrews 11 chapter, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Right. So you got to have faith. And he, that, and he that served the heavenly father must believe that he is, right? Hebrews 11 and verse 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to the heavenly father must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So that's the point, man. And that's what Daniel had. And Daniel pleased the heavenly father, and that's why the heavenly father delivered him. Also, uh, one other account, you have our forefather uh, uh, Elijah, right? Which I'm going to grab that for y'all so y'all can see. Right when there was a uh, sore famine in the land, what did the, what, what did the heavenly Father do? He, he he had Elijah be fed. So we read these scriptures. These scriptures are put in here, like it says Romans uh, uh, the fifteenth chapter. These things uh, uh, were written four times for our learning through comfort of the scriptures. We might have hope. Right. So you read these scriptures. You read these situations where the heavenly Father had our forefathers in it, you know, uh, and delivered them. So if you serve in, in, in the same lot. Right. What makes you think that the heavenly father not going to be there for you? Right. That's why he got these scriptures here for us, for, the, for us to read. First, first Kings chapter 17 and verse two. It says, um, matter of fact, I'm going to start verse one. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was the inhabitants of uh, Gilead, unto Ahab as Adawan, the power of Israel, liveth before whom I stand. There shall not a dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Right. So basically the heavenly father had Elijah. You know, tell, tell, tell uh, uh, Ahab that what? It's not going to be any rain. And when it's not going to be any rain, there's going to be a famine, right? 
Verse 2, And the word of Hadawan came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherioth, that is before Jordan, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. So the heavenly Father provided water for him, right, through the brook. And I have commanded the ravens, right, which are which are birds, right, to feed thee. So he went and did according unto the word of Ha'adawan, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherioth, uh, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. So the heavenly Father provided for Elijah during that scarce uh, 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 scarce famine, right, where everybody else was hungry. He was eating, and, and he had animals actually bring him food, man, right. So we understand through scriptures like this that the Heavenly Father, he's going to be there for us the same way. And then also it was just um, another account where, you know, Elijah, you know, uh, basically, I'm going to read it right here. I got a verse 8. It says, and the word of Hadawan came unto him saying, so that's the same thing during Jacob's trouble. You know, you may hear a voice in your head and you and you just know it's the Heavenly Father. It's just You just know, right? And said, go here. And you just go there and, and there's already a place prepared for you, Right. First Kings 17 and 8, it says, And the word of Hadawan came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to uh, Zerapath, which belongeth uh, to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. All right? So that's the point. So it's these same things that are going to happen to, to the men and women of the Heavenly Father now, man. You know, when, when all hell breaks loose. Right? And we have to remember scriptures like this. Because when you go going through a, a, a situation like that, that's somewhat similar because it is going to be a famine in the land just like it was back then, right? You're going to remember that the Heavenly Father was there for Elijah. He's going to be there for you too, right? Because like, what, let's see what the scripture says. Let me see. Let me grab. Matter of fact, I'm going to grab Isaiah 33. Matter of fact, I'm going to grab Psalms. I'm going to grab Psalms. I, uh, Psalms chapter 37 and verse 25. It says, <clears throat> I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread, right? That's the point, man. Ultimately, the Heavenly Father, he's not going to have us begging bread. He's not going to have us be forsaken. And how will we be forsaken? Like, ultimately, to the point where he don't come through for us, right? So he's not He's not going to He's not gonna have that. He's not going to do that for us, man. Especially if we've been sowing, you know, bountifully to the Spirit and doing what we're supposed to do. It don't work like that. The Heavenly Father comes through for his, uh, uh, for his men and his women, man, right? For those who are serving him in all truth and sincerity. That's that's just how it goes, right? And that's what the Heavenly Father does, and that's a beautiful thing. Right? I have this in right here in Matthew the sixth chapter. It says, <clears throat> Therefore take no thought, saying, What what shall ye what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or with or wherewith shall we all be clothed? Shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of the heavenly father and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Right? Yeah, that's the point. I want to start further. I should have started further up, but this is good too. Right? Showing that what, man? Don't don't be thinking about all that. You, you won't you gonna get your daily bread. You're gonna be taken care of. You're gonna be provided for. We just gotta continue to do what we're supposed to do, right? And that's serving Yahweh Yahweh Shah. Right? Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. This is where I wanted to start. It says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought. For your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for the bot, nor yet for your body, what ye sh what you shall put on, is not life more than meat, and the body than remnant. Behold the fowls of the air, meaning the birds of the air, for they sow not, they not planting nothing, they not farming, neither do they reap, right? Nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Right. So that's the point. Right. You are much better than fowls of the air. The heavenly Father. You know, in our first estate, gave us dominion over uh, 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 all the animals and fowls of the air, right? So the Heavenly Father feeds them on a daily basis. They don't plant nothing. All they do is just fly around and pick up food. But the Heavenly Father makes sure that they eat. So it's the same way, man, with us. The Heavenly Father is going to be there for us, man. So this is, you know, this is why scriptures like this, you know, uh, are, are in here. So that way you can hear them, you can, you can read them, internalize them. And then when all, you know, when, when, when stuff goes on, you know, because even these type of scriptures right now are applicable, even when you're going through stuff right now on this side, man, because it's going to get, it's going to get bad. It's going to get tough over here for Jake, man. You know, but ultimately the rim of the elect, we're going to be straight, man. You know, I don't want to rock the Zion of the elect, you know? So brothers and sisters got to take a good heart, you know, uh, internalize scriptures like these and know that we're going to be good, man. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and end off there. Only, uh, I sincerely pray that you, uh, I sincerely hope that you 
Sincere heart of true believers were edified, exhorted, and comforted. That give all glory, honor, and praise unto my power, Yahweh, Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shah. Shalom.